Hello, everyone, and welcome to the week ahead. Blessings to you on this beautiful Scorpio new moon. Um, I began my recent new moon ceremony with a quote from one of my favorite people, and I think I'll share it with you now. Um, this quote is often attributed to Nelson Mandela, but it's actually from Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us, the glory of love that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And I would add to that, as we liberate our own darkness, as we liberate our own shadow, as we liberate our own shame, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we heal ourselves, we give permission to heal. We give others permission to heal. We support others to heal. As we meet ourselves more deeply, we give others permission to meet us more deeply. As we see ourselves more deeply, we give others permission to see us more deeply. Into me, you see intimacy. This is the true and deepest desire of Scorpio to give all and be all. And that includes being able to be with all, all the darkness, all of the shadow, all of the terror, all of the fear, all of the suffering in the world. I've been thinking a lot about how this, um, you know, we could call this a grand water trine only from the perspective of adding the Pluto polarity point. So that Pluto polarity point in cancer, the Pluto polarity point in evolutionary astrology is the, uh, you know, the seed of where our evolution is, right? And it's 28 degrees cancer right now right? The, the deep vulnerability, the womb, the tenderness of the mother, the creation. And then we have this moon in Scorpio in its new phase, trying to Neptune. We have Ceres trying Neptune, which is Ceres is also the archetype of the mother. The moon is the archetype of the mother, right? This is a deep, deep healing and then we have Mars opposite Uranus. That opposition is already perfected. Now we have the sun moving in that opposition right now. This is how the week begins. Venus is in her home sign of Libra, ruling the south node. We also have Pallas Athene in Libra as well, moving to, towards a square with Pluto. And, you know, this week... It, we're going to be in the growing of the light, right? So whatever whatever illuminated in the darkness of this past week, we, we move towards the expansion of our awareness, right? The growing phase, the new moon phase, right? The seed is planted in the new moon. The Baslamic phase, the, the previous cycle is closed out. And so as we're going, whenever we're in the new moon phase, the early part, we're planting seeds, but we never know what's going to grow. We just have these intentions that we sow, 
right? And some things take longer to grow than other things. Some intentions take longer to come to fruition than other things. It may take, you know, spinach, I don't know, four to six weeks to come to full maturity. And yet a beautiful apple tree could take 15 years. It takes, you know, a lunar cycle for a woman to move through her fertility and yet it would take nine months for that to become a baby, right? Different things move at different flows. Certain ideas can come into our life and it can take months or years for those ideas to take root. And we now have, you know, Mercury and Sagittarius. So I really think we're mer- we're moving through from these murky waters of Scorpio into a place of new ideas, new ideals. And those where they've come from belief systems and ideologies that have previously challenged us we might be able to finally start creating new beliefs, new ideas, new feelings, new um, new ways. You know, rather than it becoming a theological or theosophical debate, we can start to just say, oh, I want to live with in this natural scope, this authentic way of expressing something that's true inside of me. And when we start to live in the way that we truly want to live, that heals us. And I recently did a beautiful ceremony over the last weekend on 11-11. And one of the messages I received was, If you're waiting for permission to be yourself, you've just received it. (laughs) There you go. You know, if you're waiting for permission to be yourself, you have just received it. That's the good news. Then the rest of our life is how we live into actually being ourselves, right? How we dismantle the conditioning, um, how we create the conditions in our environment that are not stifling, but supportive. How we uh, redefine our habits and our, um, we reclaim our power, right? That's a part of what's growing in this Capricorn moon. As the moon moves towards Pluto, it's gonna also move through the polarity point opposing that polarity point. And so there's, you know, what happens on the other side of that is that we can begin to have new ideas that come into light, right? That's that's the first quarter phase. There's an emerging, growing consciousness that we have about our life, our world, our belief systems, our ideas. And then we start to actually practically put things into place. And this is a really interesting time of the year. You know, we're going to be getting in um, for the Jeffrey Wolf Green Association of Evolutionary Astrologers. We're going to be actually this Saturday is when we're doing the first introduction. And it's a totally free class. There's a link in the description to this video. If you want to join, Kristen Fontana and Ari Masha Wolf are going to be leading that class. And Um, introducing planetary pairs, which is like, and the aspects and phases between planets. This is a lot of what I'm referring to, but from the perspective of evolutionary astrology. And then we'll be starting in this uh, new cycle, a monthly class series with introducing uh, planets and evolutionary astrology. So if you're wanting to learn and to grow in that way, this is a great opportunity to join the free class. Um, but we're, you know, it's about coming together and learning together. 
And that's one of the most powerful ways in which we can instill change in our own lives. It runs in opposition to the fear, to the isolation, to the aloneness, to the existential crisis of our world that we face right now, which is like solo individualism run rampant to the extent to which it's destroying humanity. Loneliness and isolation run rampant to the extent to which it becomes destructive to our health and to our well-being. And we have to start to um, you know, counter that influence, the opposition, the, the tension of the opposition, the tension of the square, right? These are aspects in astrology that reflect how things get changed. Because otherwise, left to our own devices, human beings are creatures of habit. And one of the thing, one of the questions that came up in our car ride home the other day was like, why is it that human beings have destructive habits and continue to um, like perpetuate them even beyond knowing? Like, why do we, why do we smoke when we know that smoking caused cancer? Why do we, you know, why do we do things that we know hurt ourselves? Why do we stay in relationships where we know it's like not serving us? Why do we do all the things, right? And I, that's a really, it's a really hard question to answer. Is it fear? Is it complacency? Is it procrastination? Like what's at the root? And one of the beauties of this Scorpio season is that we can actually begin to get to the roots of things. And the healing that can come then through the, through the water elements through releasing, emoting, letting go, through vulnerability, through tenderness, through softening, through spiritual practice, through forgiveness, through compassion, right? Then can lead us into the energy of Mars and harnessing the Mars energy towards actual growth right, towards new starts. And here we have at this new, um, it's such an interesting thing. Let me go back just a little bit so you can grab this, which is like this moon that moves into Aries, right, as the sun moves into Sagittarius. Um, there we go. Here we go. Uh, it's beautiful. Fire. We get this fire trine on Wednesday. I would say that this is probably a really good time for kicking things off, right? That have been brewing inside of us, right? So the Mars and Scorpio, this deeper, right, work. And then we're bringing that out. And um, that's funny. It's 11, 22, 23. <laughs> Maybe that's a good day uh, to start something new. And we also have Venus, though. She's moving towards the south node now. She's moving towards her square to Pluto. Um, so, you know, and Venus and Mars are moving in this sort of energy. She's following him. He's in Scorpio. He's like, you know. Um, but they're not far apart from one another in terms of the healing journey in in love evolution in my class series we follow venus and mars and pluto all the way around to their conjunction but you know it's it's important to note that this is a part of the cycle that we're working with and she's behind him and in you know, the coming days, then the moon is going to conjoin with Chiron. Chiron is also where we're working with the, the medicine of our wounds, the healing of our wounds, and the courage that that creates in our life to bring about change. And maybe this for us is not necessarily participating in the status quo, right? And this is the time of Thanksgiving and then Black Friday and all of that, but actually breaking free of that 
and becoming in a way more authentic and true and healing some of those ideas through not participating in the same pattern, right? How we heal as the moon comes through the North Node is through embodying a different set of values. And a part of what we're working with also with um, Jupiter retrograde and Uranus retrograde, this deeper internalized energy of change is that our values are transforming from the inside. The more we change on the inside, the more the world on the outside changes. And that is like what the world needs most right now. I've seen a lot of people move from Thanksgiving to like sharing gratitude to really, and even recognizing the indigenous and the first nation people you know, so many of the things that we celebrate in a colonized world are actually tools of um, oppression. And they reflect a lot of the trauma, but in a very distorted way where we're buying and consuming and, you know, sort of participating in all these things. And yet what, what is being asked of us is to reconnect with the earth, to really reflect on what we have and how what we have is enough. We have enough. We are enough. If we've been sold our relative insufficiency, let me tell you that you're good enough exactly as you are. There isn't really anything more, you know, nothing more I need to say, nothing more we need to do, you know. And so the song for me for this week is this song um, by a beloved friend and sister who is singing, why, why worry when we can pray? I'll leave the link to the her song in the comments also, but you know, why, why do the same things every day? when we have the power to change our lives, when we have what we need, when we can really begin to get ourselves free. This is the time of year for us to really do that and to put that into action. This is a powerful week to do that with this growing light, with this change. And we may feel so much greater optimism and freedom and joy to do that. So may you be blessed. May you be well. May you have everything that you need. And I love you all so much. I have so much gratitude for your presence in my life. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for listening to this. Please leave me your comments, your prayers, your heart. Like this video, subscribe subscribe to this channel. If you haven't been with me before, thank you for joining me. So happy that you're here. May you be blessed, my friends. Until next week. Bye for now.